I've been married to Abigail for five years. To everyone else, I'm seen as the perfect husband. Even making it to the gossip magazine's list of husband who loves his wife number one. Everyone envies us, but no one knows what kind of role I play in this marriage. For five years, she's always been indifferent, and gradually, my passionate love for her faded away. I know, deep down in her heart, I'll never be that person, the person she can't forget. So, I asked for a divorce and left her, but a week later, she showed up at the door of my new home. Noah. She looked at me, her eyes red. Why did you stop wanting me? Chapter 1. This afternoon, as soon as I got home, Secretary Wu texted me, Sir, President Liu has a social engagement tonight and will be home around 10.30. I looked at my phone for a while and replied, Okay, thanks, 10.30, by then, she'll probably have eaten and had a few drinks. I just need to prepare her bath and put fresh clothes in the bathroom. Once everything was ready, it was exactly 10.15, I thought about it, left a light on in the living room, and went to bed, half asleep. I vaguely heard the sound of the door opening, the water running in the bathroom echoed, and just as I was about to fall asleep, a familiar scent drifted over, a warm body pressed against my cool back, and I groggily turned my head, her lips landed precisely on mine, she must have had a little too much to drink, why are you going to bed so early, she murmured, snuggling into my ear, I'm just a bit tired, but she kept holding on to me, oh well, whenever she's drunk, she's like this, if I don't go along with her, she'll start whining. Maybe this is the only time she's affectionate with me. Maybe it's only at moments like this that I feel like her husband. I couldn't refuse her. After it was over, it was already late at night. She fell asleep in my arms, but I couldn't sleep. I got up, poured myself a glass of red wine, and sat alone in the living room, staring at our wedding photo on the wall. When would be the right time to bring up the divorce? Chapter 2 Abigail and I met in college. Back then, she was the radiant goddess, great family, excellent grades, beautiful absolutely perfect. It was only natural that I fell for someone like her. I was pretty persistent back then too, but even after two semesters of chasing her and doing countless foolish things, I still couldn't win her over. I still remember that snowy day when I made her favorite dessert with my own hands and waited for her outside the girl's dormitory. But all I got in return was her cold words, Noah, stop coming after me. I like someone else. I didn't want to believe it at first, thinking it was just an excuse to reject me, until one day, by chance, I saw him. Her love, Fabian. I watched as she carefully adjusted his collar, playfully ruffled his hair, and smiled at him with nothing but affection in her eyes. And then, she stood on tiptoe and gave him a gentle kiss. That's when I realized, Abigail could love someone that way, but that someone wasn't me. Her relationship with Fabian quickly became the talk of the school, a goddess dating a poor student. And Fabian faced a lot of criticism. People thought he was trying to cling to the Lou family, calling him a gold digger. But Abigail always stood by him even using her family connections to shut down the school's gossip forum. Despite all this, their passionate love didn't have a fairy tale ending. Abigail never told me the reason for their breakup, but rumors said it was because Abigail wanted Fabian to marry her after graduation and become the Lou family's live-in son-in-law. But Fabian refused. He said he didn't want to depend on a woman and wanted to make his own way in the world. Many people saw them arguing on campus, fighting and making up again and again, until finally, on the day Fabian decided to return to his hometown to become a village teacher, they broke up. Six months later, during a project collaboration between the Lu family and the Sioux family, Abigail and I crossed paths again. Because of the project, we became familiar with each other once more. Looking back, maybe I took advantage of the situation. I was still as good to her as I had been years before. I would share insights I'd gained from working at the Sioux family's company, remind her to drink less during business dinners, and always take her home safely after those dinners. Three months later, on a snowy night, she saw me shivering in the cold outside her company and suddenly asked me, Noah, do you really like me this much? I stared at her blankly and nodded. Yes, I'd always liked her. She smiled. Then, do you want to marry me? Chapter 3 When we first got married, I was full of passion for this marriage. In fact, for most of the past five years, I've always been passionate about this marriage, because I loved her. I also naively believed that the reason she asked me to marry her was that she loved me too. So even though she rarely replied to my messages, even though I had to learn about her schedule through Lou's secretary, even though we had no real intimacy beyond our routine married life, my love for her never wavered. She's an only child and needs to inherit the family business, while I have an older brother. So my life has been relatively easy. Old Master Lou is strict, and the Lou Corporation's board of directors often makes things difficult for her because of her young age. I know it's always been hard for her. That's why, after careful consideration, I gave up the management position at the Sioux family's company and joined Lou Corporation to help her manage the most chaotic branch. 
I knew it wasn't easy for her as a woman to establish herself in such a large company, so I tried my best to take care of everything else for her. Even when I got sick from overwork, I never told her. I went to the hospital alone, until one day, I accidentally stumbled upon a box. Inside, I found a document showing that for years, she had been anonymously donating money to a rural school, and the principal of that rural school, in gratitude for the anonymous donor, would write a handwritten letter of thanks every year after receiving the donation, and have it delivered through the appropriate institutions. The letters were neatly arranged in the box, not a single crease, and the principal of that rural school was Fabian. Chapter 4 The next morning, after getting up, I asked the housekeeper to prepare breakfast. Suddenly, Abigail came up behind me and hugged me. I was startled and turned around to look at her. Are you having breakfast at home today? She nodded. Yeah. The housekeeper froze, staring blankly at me. I glanced awkwardly at the ingredients in the housekeeper's hands. In the past, I always asked the housekeeper to prepare two servings of breakfast, whether Abigail would be home to eat or not, because she always left earlier than me, and I cherished any moment we could eat together. But recently, I stopped asking for two servings. It felt like a bit of a waste. Well, you eat this one first, I said plating the omelet the housekeeper had made for her. She looked at the plate, slightly dazed. You should eat it while it's hot. I'm not going to the office today, heading straight to the supplier's place, so I'll just grab something along the way, I said as I placed a glass of milk down and turned to leave. Noah. She suddenly grabbed me, looking like she had something to say but hesitated. I turned back, puzzled. What is it? She stepped closer, wrapped her arms around my waist, and looked up at me. You haven't seemed yourself lately. Is the workload at the branch overwhelming you? She asked, looking into my eyes, tired. Well, I guess I have been tired lately, tired from thinking about the divorce. I don't have any plans tonight. Secretary Wu mentioned that a new Michelin restaurant opened near the company. They serve Cantonese food, your favorite. Want to go together? She asked. I hesitated for a moment and confirmed. You have time tonight? She nodded. How long? She smiled. A lot of time. A lot. Really? Of course. That's great. I'll come by the office to pick you up, I said. Hugging her, suddenly, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. She has time, that means tonight. I can finally have a proper talk about the divorce. Chapter 5 However, by the evening, I was still waiting for Abigail. She stood me up, at 5 in the afternoon. Just as I left the suppliers, I received a message from Secretary Wu. Abigail had something come up and wouldn't be able to have dinner with me. Over the past 5 years, this had happened countless times. I was used to it, so I changed my clothes and prepared to have dinner alone. After eating, I reviewed a few quarterly reports from the branch, then picked up my phone to unwind with some short videos. That's when I saw Abigail in a trending local video. She wasn't alone. Fabian was with her. The two were sitting across from each other in the first floor cafe of Lou Corporation's building. The person who filmed the video was probably an employee at the company. In the video, they excitedly narrated, Check out the perks of working here. You can run into our goddess boss and the famous educator Principal Lin having coffee together. He looks even more handsome than on TV. I wish I could go over and get an autograph. The video was posted five minutes ago. The comment section was full of praise. A beautiful boss and a handsome teacher. They look amazing together. So envious of the poster. Hey, does your company still have openings? I'd love to be there in person too. I stared at the screen for a while and then turned off my phone. So Abigail stood me up because of Fabian. For some reason, even though I'm her husband, it felt completely normal that she would miss our dinner because of Fabian. After five years of marriage, does it even matter anymore? In her heart, there's probably no comparison between me and Fabian. Chapter 6 At 9.30, Abigail finally returned home. What did you have for dinner tonight? She walked over and sat beside me, unusually concerned about my dinner. I didn't answer, just paused for a moment and softly asked her, Did Fabian come by tonight? She froze for a moment, seeming a bit surprised and a bit subtly angry. Who told you that? I shook my head. No one. I saw it on a video. After a brief silence, she sighed. Noah, I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to overthink it. Don't worry, there's nothing going on between me and him. I did anonymously donate to his school before, and somehow, word got out. He came with a TV crew to thank me. His schedule was tight, so I just did a few interviews with him. She sat down next to me. We met at the company cafe. Plenty of employees were there. Noah, she wrapped her arms around mine. We've been married for five years. There's still some trust, right? Yeah, I should have time tomorrow. Let's go have that Cantonese meal. Abigail. I suddenly interrupted her. I don't actually like Cantonese food. I said that because you liked it. Back then, I just wanted more opportunities to have meals with you. She froze for a moment. We've been married for five years. Do you know what kind of food I like? She didn't answer. Of course, she didn't know, and she never wanted to find out. 
The emotions I'd been holding back for hours were on the verge of exploding. I suppressed the urge to yell at her but still asked that sharp question. So, you remember that Fabian loves black coffee and croissants, but you don't know what your own husband likes to eat. Noah, she frowned. If you have any issues with me, we can talk, but don't drag Fabian into this. Of course, just one mention of him, and she couldn't stand it. I wanted to talk tonight, I said, taking a deep breath and turning to look at her. Abigail, let's get a divorce. Chapter 7 the air was silent for about a minute. Noah. Abigail's eyes widened. Do you know what you're saying? I know. Divorce isn't something you can just throw out there. I know. The silence continued. After a while, Abigail suddenly stood up. Maybe my tone wasn't great earlier, but you're asking for a divorce just because I met Fabian. I stayed silent for a moment, realizing she was missing the point. If I were really going to cheat, I wouldn't do it like this. You've known me for five years. You should know how I handle things. She continued. Yes. I do know her. She's always been strong. If she sets her mind on something, she'll do it flawlessly. And when she wants something, she plans meticulously to ensure success. But does she know me? Has she ever loved me? After seeing that video tonight, the inferiority I felt back in our school days returned. The truth was right in front of me. As long as Fabian was around, Abigail would never see me. But at this point, for an adult to still be hung up on love or not would be ridiculous. I just think that after all these years of marriage, we're not really suited for each other. You could have better options. How are we not suited? She naturally reached out her hand. Noah, you've done so well over the past five years, but I don't want to keep doing this anymore. I dodged her hand. Abigail's hand lingered in the air. I've already prepared the divorce papers. Noah, she suddenly cut me off. Unhappy. I've explained everything about Fabian. I've promised you there's nothing more between us. What else do you want? She glared at me. If you're going to keep harping on about tonight, you're being unreasonable. You're a grown man. Stop acting like a woman, clinging to every little thing. The words I hadn't yet spoken were shoved back down my throat. Oh, I guess tonight's conversation wasn't going to happen. Maybe realizing her tone was too harsh. After a moment, she softened her voice. I've been really tired lately. Don't make a fuss. Okay. With that, she got up and went to take a shower. Watching her walk away, I softly muttered, Abigail, I had hot pot for dinner. Her footsteps faltered. Did you know? That's my favorite dish. Chapter 8. No way. What did you say? Divorce. My brother Dominic's eyes bulged like saucers after reading the divorce papers in my hand. Since my marriage to Abigail, the collaboration between the Lou and Sue families had strengthened considerably. I thought it would be wise to inform my brother about the divorce in advance. If you could come back to help me at Sue Corp, I'd be more than happy. But why are you suddenly thinking of divorce? Well, sure, in the beginning, your marriage was a bit forced, but you two always seemed so loving afterward. My brother said as he swung his golf club. What do you mean by forced? Dominic. Well, you see, my brother rubbed his temples, seemingly regretting his slip of the tongue. Five years ago, the Lu family was in desperate need of funds. At the time, I noticed you really liked her. You were running after her day and night. So when Abigail came to me on behalf of Lu Corp, I kind of hinted at something. I stared at my brother in disbelief. What did you hint at? My brother awkwardly averted his eyes. Well, I told her that if our families could become in-laws, I'd definitely be willing to help with the funds. I froze, feeling my blood turn cold in an instant. Little brother, Dominic looked at me, concerned. And what else? I pressed my fingers to my temple. What else don't I know? He hesitated. Dominic, I'm about to get a divorce. What more is there to hide? It's not a big deal. Really, it's just, on your wedding day, Abigail's ex-boyfriend showed up. I stared at him, speechless. He wanted to see Abigail, but I didn't want to cause a scene. I told him that you two were very happy together and that Abigail wouldn't want to see him. So, I sent him away. He scratched his head. Since there were people from the Lou family around, I'm not sure if Abigail even knows about it. So that's how it was. That's how it all was. I had thought she agreed to marry me because I moved her heart, that maybe she liked me a little. But this marriage was just her sacrifice for the company, for the Lou family. The meaning behind her words that snowy night five years ago became clear. Noah, do you really like me that much? Enough to force me into marriage? So she married me but built a chasm between us. She never let me cross that line. When we first got married, I would often text her, trying to take her out or share little bits of life with her. But aside from company matters, she rarely responded. If anything came up, her secretary would contact me instead. Over time, I spoke less and stopped bothering her. Eventually, my main contact became Secretary Wu. We had a normal married life, and she would whisper sweet words in my ear, calling me Noah over and over again. I always thought this was proof of our love, but whenever I mentioned having children, she'd say she was too busy, that it wasn't the right time, 
Looking back now, she probably never intended to have kids with me. After all, I was just her husband, nothing more. Last night, she asked me, assuring me there would be no further involvement with Fabian. What more did I want? Indeed, on our wedding day, they had the chance to start over, because of me. They missed it again, maybe for good. So what more could this sinner want? But when I fell in love with her, I never wanted this. When she was with Fabian, I was envious, but I never wanted to be the third wheel, let alone break them up. I loved her because I wanted what was best for her. Yet, she punished me in this way, for five whole years. Chapter 9 I wandered aimlessly down the street, and before I knew it, I found myself outside the Lou Corp building. Inside my briefcase were the finalized divorce papers. I thought about it and texted Secretary Wu, telling her I was here to see Abigail. I wanted the divorce. I didn't want to drag it out any longer. As I walked into the first floor lobby, I spotted Fabian. He was smiling, talking to the receptionist, and when he heard my footsteps, he turned to look at me. He was thinner than in the video, darker skinned than in our school days. Despite wearing a simple jacket and jeans, he exuded confidence, maturity, and composure. Long time no see, he nodded at me. We went together to the first floor cafe. I never thought I'd taste croissants and black coffee just like the ones from our school cafe here. Brings back memories. He smiled. Still as handsome and fresh as ever. Those were good times. He started telling me about his experiences over the years. He really is remarkable. After returning to his hometown to become a village teacher, he helped many children who had dropped out of school. Now, the school is on track, and he's become quite well known. You're really impressive, I said, genuinely praising him. He smiled. People only see the glamorous side. In reality, I almost gave up several times back then. He lifted his cup and took a sip of coffee. Actually, I came to see Abigail on your wedding day. I stayed silent, not responding. I was so reckless back then, thinking I could break up with her without consequences. But after becoming a village teacher, I realized how big the gap between ideals and reality really is. Many things were harder than I imagined. There were many times I couldn't hold on. At my lowest, I wanted to give up everything and come back to find her. But then I heard about your wedding. I'm sorry, I said. He looked startled. I didn't know you came that day. He lowered his head, saying nothing. I'm getting a divorce from Abigail, I told him. Fabian's eyes widened. You must be joking, he said with a sudden laugh. I've seen you in the media so many times. People always call you two the perfect couple. It's true, can I ask you something? After a while, he spoke softly. Why, are you divorcing her? I shook my head. Why else? Because I'm tired. I wish I could have someone who would let me be reckless and love me unconditionally. Just once. Chapter 10. At that moment, a familiar voice came from the entrance of the cafe, Noah. Both Fabian and I turned around. It was Abigail. She quickly walked over, and upon seeing Fabian, she seemed to pause for a moment, then frowned as she looked at me. What are you doing here all of a sudden? Looking at her expression, I immediately understood. She likely thought I had come specifically today to cause trouble for Fabian. Abigail. Fabian stood up as well. Sorry for the intrusion again. I wanted to discuss a few educational charity projects I mentioned to you before, and I just happened to have some free time today. All right. I'll have my secretary take you upstairs. After speaking, Abigail called Secretary Wu, who had been standing by the door, to lead Fabian away. I thought she would go upstairs with him, but to my surprise, she stayed where she was, looking at me. I was a little puzzled. Could she have sent Fabian away to settle accounts with me in public? After all, I am still her husband. Her favoritism was too obvious and inappropriate, wasn't it? I had no choice but to massage my brow and explain. Abigail, it's not what you think, Noah are you feeling unwell? I froze for a moment, not understanding her. She had already stepped closer and grasped my hand. Why is your face so pale, and your hand so cold? Chapter 11. Around us, employees were passing by, glancing over with whispered conversations. Suddenly, I realized the reason behind her unusual behavior. Abigail and I rarely appeared together in such private settings. She was likely worried I might cause trouble for Fabian in public. So she sent him away and then pretended to show affection in front of the staff to prevent any rumors that could harm Fabian. I didn't mind. We were getting divorced anyway. Helping her put on a show with Fabian didn't bother me. Besides, if I didn't make things difficult for them, the divorce negotiations would go more smoothly. With that in mind, I raised my head and smiled. I'm fine. Don't you and Principal Lin still have things to discuss? I'll be on my way. After speaking, I withdrew my hand, picked up my bag, and prepared to leave. But she blocked me. Where are you going? She pulled me closer and suddenly placed her hand on my forehead. Noah, you have a fever. I'm taking you to the hospital. Chapter 12. Abigail insisted on dragging me to the car, leaving me speechless. I'll drive, I said. When we were together, 
I usually drove to let her rest. You're sick. I'll drive. She insisted. I initially thought she was just looking for an excuse to get me out of the company. But to my surprise, she actually drove me to the hospital. Nothing serious. Just normal body temperature. It's your husband's hypoglycemia, though. How long has it been? The doctor asked Abigail. Abigail was taken aback. It's been a few years. I replied for her. Family members should pay more attention. Make sure he always has some sugar on hand. The doctor said as he wrote in my medical record. Hypoglycemia can range from mild to severe. Apart from heart palpitations and fatigue, it can lead to fainting in serious cases. Abigail nodded. Okay, it's nothing. Doctor, I felt like this was being blown out of proportion. I always carry candy and biscuits with me. After seeing the doctor, I wanted to leave as soon as possible. But Abigail kept pestering him with more questions about how to manage hypoglycemia. It was as if she had suddenly developed a deep interest in the condition. After we left the hospital and were heading to the parking lot, Abigail clung to my arm the entire time. Having gone through all that at the hospital, I genuinely felt a bit dizzy. After sitting in the car, I pulled out a candy from my briefcase, unwrapped it, and popped it into my mouth. The air inside the car was stifling. I decided to close my eyes. I didn't know how long we had been driving when the car finally stopped. Are we there? I asked groggily. Red light. Oh. The car fell silent for a moment. Then she suddenly asked softly. Why didn't you ever tell me? I looked at her. Confused about what she meant. About your health issues. This wasn't the first time. Right. She parked the car on the side of the road. Why didn't you tell me before? I did. I closed my eyes again. What? She looked startled. Remember. Right after we got married. There was a week when you came home late every night. On that Friday. I had a hypoglycemic episode while driving back from a branch office. I felt dizzy and pulled over to ask if you could bring me some candy. I chuckled. You didn't respond. You've probably forgotten by now. I sent you so many messages back then. It's normal if you don't remember. And another time. You might recall. We were doing a magazine interview together. The reporter accidentally knocked over my briefcase. And a bunch of candy fell out. Because of that. The reporter suspected we had a child in secret. And the interview questions became very sharp. You were quite upset and told me afterward not to carry so much useless stuff in my bag. Why didn't I tell you? Because you never gave me the chance. And I was afraid that this little flaw would become an excuse for you to dislike me. You don't like candy. So I hid it in the inner pocket of my bag where you wouldn't see it. You wanted to become the head of the Lou family. So I did everything I could to help you achieve that. Noah. She suddenly took my hand. I actually found a restaurant that serves spicy food. I wanted to take you there tonight. Her hand trembled slightly. But since you're not feeling well, maybe we can eat something lighter instead. How about that? I shook my head. I'll just have some porridge at home. You don't need to stay with me. You should head back to the company. Noah. I'm free tonight. She insisted. I kindly reminded her. But Fabian is still waiting for you at the company. That's something the vice president can handle. I looked at her. Perplexed. So, you really have time tonight? She nodded. Yes. I'm free. Then. I thought for a moment. Since you're free. Let's go straight home. Okay. She nodded. A glimmer of joy in her eyes. Okay. Let's go home. Suddenly. I felt a wave of happiness. Once we get home. We can talk about the divorce. Chapter 13. For the remainder of the trip. Abigail didn't say a word. She's a sharp person. I think from last night to today. She's realized that when I said I wanted a divorce. I was serious. When we got home. I calmly took out the divorce agreement. I spent a month working on this. I've considered every detail. Our divorce won't affect the Sue and Lou families. And I will step down from the management of Lou's subsidiary. If there's anything you'd like to add, feel free. We can discuss it. She silently looked at the divorce agreement. Not saying a word. I sat across from her. I know you're busy. So I tried to be as thorough as possible before bringing this up. This way, we can move quickly and not waste each other's time. I don't agree. She suddenly pushed the agreement back and turned her head away. I was stunned for a moment. Which part do you disagree with? I opened the agreement. Perplexed. Is it the part about the shares? I've already made the biggest concession. Any less. And I'm afraid my brother. She suddenly reached out and pressed down on the agreement. Noah. I don't agree with the divorce. She looked at me. Speaking each word clearly. We locked eyes. And her expression seemed very serious. Why? I asked. But then it dawned on me. Oh. Do you think that I've managed the subsidiary well over the past five years and you're afraid your next husband won't do as well? And people will criticize him. You don't have to worry. As long as he's willing to put in the effort. He'll do just fine. I thought for a moment. Then went to the bookshelf and pulled out five notebooks. These notebooks record a lot of important details about the internal workings of Lou Corporation and how to deal with the media. As well as contact information for suppliers and the staff structure of the subsidiary. Don't worry. I can hand all of this over to your future husband. If he needs help later. He can always ask me. Noah. 
She suddenly raised her voice, her eyes reddening. I looked at her, confused. What do you take our marriage for? And what do you take me for? A job. I didn't say anything and just turned to look out the window. How could it possibly be just a job? It's because I valued this marriage so much that I worked so hard to make everything perfect. But now, what's the point of saying any of this? Noah. She took my hand that was resting on the table. You need to understand. We're not just work partners. We're a married couple. But apart from sharing a bed, we don't have anything like a real marriage. She froze for a moment. We. We've had dinner together so few times that I can count them on one hand. I've sent you fewer messages than I've sent Secretary Wu. I don't know what other marriages are like, but I know I don't want this one anymore. I gently withdrew my hand. Abigail, I've thought about this a lot. In this marriage, you've done nothing wrong. I was the one who pursued you, the one who wanted to marry you. And for five years, you never cheated. It was me who held on to unrealistic fantasies about this marriage. We could go on living like this, but I think in life, we should be with someone we love and who loves us back. After all, being with someone you love will make you happier, right? She stared at me blankly. Someone I love, she repeated in a daze. Who do you think I love? I shook my head. I don't know. But whoever it is, whether Fabian or someone else, it's not me. Chapter 14 Early the next morning, I moved out of the house and back into the apartment I had bought before we got married. The night before, we had sat in silence for a few minutes before Abigail got up to take a phone call and then left the house. She didn't come back all night. She took the divorce agreement with her. I figured she had agreed to the divorce. After all, it wasn't much of a loss for her. The wedding ring on my left hand was the only gift Abigail had ever given me in five years. Before I left, I took off the ring and placed it on the bedside table. Just as I finished packing, I got a call from my brother. Hey, why did Abigail call me early this morning asking what kind of candy you like? My brother's voice was exasperated. What's going on? Are you two playing house? Are you getting divorced or not? I was momentarily taken aback. We are. Hey, bro. I thought for a moment and asked, don't we have a small media company that hasn't been doing well? My brother hummed in acknowledgement. It hasn't been profitable for years. I'm planning to cut my losses and shut it down. Then. I held the phone, gazing out at the expansive blue sky from the 26th floor window. Can you give it to me? Chapter 15. In the early evening, I unexpectedly received a message from Abigail. Let's go to tonight's party together. Okay. I stared at my phone feeling a bit disoriented. This kind of message usually came from Secretary Wu, not from her. We should go separately. While we're going through the divorce, I've moved out of the house. There was no further reply from her. That made sense. It was what I had expected. But an hour later, when I went downstairs to get in my car, I saw Abigail. I didn't know how long she had been waiting there, but she looked exhausted. With dark circles under her eyes, I had never seen her look so worn out. What are you? Her eyes seemed to light up briefly. She quickly walked over grabbed my hand, but then froze abruptly. Your ring. I took it off. Why aren't you wearing it anymore? Her voice had a hint of urgency. We're going through a divorce. There's no need for it anymore. Right. Noah. She raised her voice. I haven't agreed to the divorce yet. I was confused. You haven't agreed. You didn't say anything last night. You took the divorce papers, didn't you? She looked at me for a long moment, and suddenly tears welled up in her eyes. Not saying anything means I agreed. Noah. She hugged me, her voice trembling with sobs. I don't want a divorce. Chapter 16. Abigail said she didn't want a divorce. I had imagined countless obstacles on the road to divorce, my brother, the handover of the subsidiary's management, the division of assets. But I never anticipated failing at the very first step. She didn't want it. I was almost desperate. Why don't you want it? How can you not? Isn't this the best thing for both of us? She was stunned for a moment, just about to speak when the sound of a car horn interrupted her. It turned out her car was blocking someone's way. There was no choice. Under the pressure, we both got into her car and headed to the party together. As soon as I sat in the passenger seat, I noticed something strange. The once pristine back seat was now piled with one package after another. I bought some candy. She said softly, there's more in the glove compartment. From now on, don't hide it from me when you're not feeling well. Then, she added, I've also put some around the house. Abigail, I've found two great chefs who make spicy dishes. From now on, whether it's something spicy or sweet, whatever you want to eat, I'll eat with you. I'll even learn how to cook it myself. I'll start coming home earlier so we can have dinner together. On weekends, we can go to the movies, or to the amusement park. If what's bothering you is the situation with Fabian, I can explain that too. The company has indeed been involved in educational charity projects for years, but the choice of schools wasn't made by me. It was based on a comprehensive assessment by the office. I didn't expect Fabian's school to be chosen. I only found out recently myself. I know you may have seen those letters. Actually, 
They were always handled by the office. I didn't see them much earlier than you did. It was only because father found out about them recently that I asked the office to organize them so I could take them to the old house this weekend. And about the employee at the company cafe. She used to work at the school cafe. When she lost her job, I arranged for her to work here. Fabian used to work at that cafe. So she remembers him and his preferences. She seemed aggrieved. Maybe my attitude that night led to a misunderstanding. But I really think Fabian is just someone from the past. Someone who has nothing to do with us anymore. Someone irrelevant. Abigail. Noah. She interrupted me. Please. Just listen to me. I thought about it all night. In this marriage. I know I haven't been doing well. But I can change. People who admit their mistakes deserve another chance. Right. Chapter 17. By the time we arrived at the party. I still felt a bit dazed. After exchanging polite greetings with a few acquaintances, I needed some fresh air, so I went to the balcony. To my surprise, I bumped into someone familiar there, Rose, my childhood friend. I walked over. Well, well, if it isn't the universally praised, perfect husband. She raised an eyebrow and smiled. Long time no see. Her sharp tongue never failed to rub people the wrong way. How have you been? I knew her situation as an illegitimate daughter of the Tang family wasn't exactly easy doing fine. She pulled out a cigarette and offered one to me. Want one? I hesitated. Better not. You quit. If I get photographed, it'll be a hassle. After all, the media thinks I don't smoke. Pfft. How boring. She pointed to the woods outside the balcony. If anyone's hiding out there taking photos, I'll eat the entire forest. Do you believe me? I couldn't help but laugh, feeling a little lighter. All right. Give me one. That's more like it. I thought you looked like you were depressed earlier. I chuckled. Still no work for you lately. She nonchalantly nodded. Rose, have you thought about joining my little company? I knew she had always been talented in design. Huh? What's going on? Aren't you with Lou Corporation? Are you no longer the men behind Lou's success? She raised an eyebrow. I didn't feel like arguing with her. Instead, I picked up my phone and sent her some company details. The company is still in its startup phase, so the salary isn't great, but I hope you'll consider joining. Got it. She yawned but suddenly glanced past me. Toward the door, I turned around. It was Abigail. My first instinct was to stub out the cigarette. Abigail hated the smell of smoke. She walked over, frowning slightly at Rose, then looked at me. Why are you smoking? It's bad for your health, she said softly. Rose glanced at me, then at Abigail. You didn't know he smokes. Rose suddenly spoke up. He's always smoked. Abigail froze. Sister. Rose stepped closer, patting Abigail on the shoulder with a smile. You've been married for five years, right? Do you really not know your husband as well as I do? Chapter 18. Rose left, leaving behind a pale-faced Abigail and me. Look, I said, feeling a headache coming on. Don't misunderstand. I didn't mean to hide it from you. Over the years, there's been a lot going on at the subsidiary. You know how your uncles love to stir things up. In the beginning, it was really tough to handle. Sometimes, when I was stressed and tired, I'd smoke at home by myself. After I finished explaining, her face turned even paler. I thought for a moment and added, Rose and I already checked earlier. No one's out there taking photos, so you don't have to worry about any PR issues. Do you think what I'm worried about is whether someone took photos of you smoking? Her eyes were red. I froze. Isn't that what she was worried about? She lowered her head. Noah, have I disappointed you a lot? I hesitated, unsure of how to respond. Disappointed? Of course, there's been disappointment. The more you hope, the more you're bound to be disappointed. But after being disappointed enough times, you get used to it. Now that I had made up my mind to divorce, what's the point of leveling pointless accusations? I shook my head. No, not at all. Now that the subsidiary is on track, I don't smoke that much anymore. So, you can talk about your stress with Rose, but not with me. I froze. If we're being honest, would you really listen? I asked. She nodded. My only stress right now, I looked up seriously, is whether our divorce can go smoothly. And if it could happen faster, that'd be even better. At that, Abigail's whole body started trembling. I was at a loss. She had insisted I say it. After a moment, she came over and hugged me. Her voice muffled. Anything but that. She said, Noah, I can't do it. I can't divorce you. Chapter 19. Since then, Abigail seemed to change a lot. Although I insisted on stepping down from managing Lou Corporation's subsidiary and took over Sue Media, I constantly received gifts from her at the new company and homemade meals. Of course, sometimes, even Abigail herself would show up. It was as if the roles had reversed, like when I used to chase after her, but now it was the other way around. The young people at the company, unaware of my impending divorce, would praise her, saying I had married a wonderful wife, only Rose, ever since she joined my company, would give me a knowing smile whenever she saw something Abigail had sent. She would shake her head and smirk. A month later, 
the company was working on a bid proposal. Rose and I had been pulling late nights for days, working on a small detail. When we finally wrapped everything up, I relaxed my shoulders and looked at Rose, who also looked relieved. She had always been carefree with her work, so I had never seen her take things so seriously before. I smiled. Rose gave me a confused look. I laughed and explained. I feel like I might have stumbled upon a hidden gem. Rose let out a small laugh. It's not that. I'm just lowering myself to help you. All right. Fine. Fine. I couldn't help but chuckle at her attitude. I stood up. It's late. Want to grab a bite to eat? Of course. But isn't someone coming to find you today? She paused, looking toward the door. See, I told you. I turned around, and there stood Abigail. Rose lazily packed her things and waved at me. I'm heading out. Don't forget you owe me dinner. I nodded. Got it. After Rose left, the office was quiet with just me and Abigail. She silently walked over, holding a thermos in her hand. Have you eaten? She asked softly. I have. I replied. A moment of silence followed. Abigail. I think. Before I could finish, she suddenly threw herself into my arms, hugging me tightly. Abigail. I stiffened. Not sure what to do. What's wrong? She didn't say anything. Just took a deep breath. The clock on the wall ticked away. I'm jealous. After a long pause, she whispered. Noah. I'm jealous. Chapter 20. I never imagined that one day Abigail would hug me and tell me she was jealous. You asked me before why I didn't agree to the divorce. Do you know why? It's because I couldn't bear the thought of you being with someone else. Just like tonight, when I stood at the door, watching you smile at her, seeing how happy you both were. I couldn't stop the jealousy from flooding my heart. I know, deep down, that nothing is going on between you and Rose, but I was still so jealous I could hardly stand it. Noah. She buried her head in my chest. I feel like I'm going crazy. I lifted my hand and gently held her. Abigail. You also asked me why I wanted a divorce, didn't you? Her body froze. Four five years. I've been someone else's husband, dedicating all my love and attention to my wife. But in the end, I realized I had lost myself. Abigail. I want a divorce because I want to be Noah again. I want to live for myself. I gently pulled her away. It's been five years. Let's part on good terms. Okay. She shook her head. Tears streaming down her face. I hesitated for a moment, then turned to leave, but suddenly, she grabbed my hand. Honey, I froze. Just once. Give me one more chance. Okay. Her hand felt burning hot. All right, I said quietly. If by the end of the year, you step down as Lou Corporation's president, then we won't get divorced. She blinked in surprise. What? That's my only condition. She hesitated. Noah. That condition, it's too harsh for me. I shook my head and tried to pull my hand away but she wouldn't let go. That's the only condition. Nothing else will do. After a moment, she finally released my hand. I understand. She said. Chapter 21. Step down. My brother was momentarily stunned, then burst into laughter, shaking his head. No way. If Abigail steps down, I'll let you use my head as a soccer ball. I know. The situation with the Lou family was complicated. The old man had two sons, Abigail's uncle and her father. Initially, the plan was for the company to go to the elder son's family. But six years ago, Abigail's cousin got into trouble and ended up in prison. So, the responsibility fell to Abigail to take over Lou Corporation. However, the other relatives, not happy about a woman being in charge, often caused trouble within the company. Many were eyeing the president's position. And over the past five years, I had helped her deal with plenty of these issues. Abigail wasn't particularly close to the Lou patriarch since she hadn't grown up in the family mansion. And with the old man getting on in years, his judgment sometimes faltered. I knew better than anyone how much effort she had put into securing that position over the past five years. So, I knew she wouldn't step down. As it turned out, I was right. After I told her my condition, Abigail didn't come looking for me again. Three months flew by, and I threw myself into work. The company was finally showing signs of improvement. Rose and the other employees were motivated, and I could tell she had changed a lot during this time. On December 31st, we held a small company party to celebrate the end of the year. We all had dinner together and sang karaoke. My brother showed up as well. You really are something, little bro. Everyone says you're a genius when it comes to business. He grinned and started to push his luck. Shouldn't you take on more responsibilities in the family business? Dad keeps piling everything on me. I'm exhausted. The atmosphere was joyful. Since I promised to help him, my brother was in high spirits, singing and dancing without a care in the world, completely abandoning his usual composed image. At around 11 p.m., we left the karaoke place, and it had just started snowing. A few playful colleagues began throwing snowballs at each other. Across the street, the large screen on a shopping mall was showing a TV program. My brother stood behind me, babbling on. A snowflake landed on my hair, and as I brushed it off, I caught a glimpse of Abigail on the screen. 
She was poised and elegant, being interviewed by a reporter. President Liu, can you tell us why you suddenly decided to step down from your position at Liu Corporation? Was there a specific reason? Abigail smiled serenely. There's no special reason. I just want to take a break for a while, to spend time with my husband. Chapter 22 I stared blankly at the screen. When I turned my head, I saw that my brother was also in shock. After we made eye contact, he raised his right hand and quietly touched his neck. Just then, my phone rang. Hello. Where are you? City center. By the clock tower. I'll be there in half an hour. Abigail. Noah. You need to keep your word. Her voice was relaxed, carrying a hint of a smile. Wait for me. Chapter 23. At 11.45 p.m. M. I met Abigail under the clock tower. She walked through the falling snow, which gently landed on her shoulders and hair, blurring her figure, like something out of a dream. This isn't necessary, I said as we stood facing each other. You've stepped down. What if you can't go back? She shook her head and smiled calmly. If I can't go back, then I can't go back. I shook my head. Five years of hard work. How can you just walk away like that? You're being stubborn. I pinched the bridge of my nose, trying to ease the tension. She smiled, her eyes curving with amusement. So, you're worried about me, right? She took a step closer. That means I still have a chance, doesn't it? Abigail. She reached out and handed me a stack of papers. It was the divorce agreement. I froze, unsure of what to make of it. These past three months, while I've been arranging my resignation, I've done a lot of thinking. Noah. I've stepped down, but I don't want to use that to force you to stay in this marriage. She paused. The divorce papers, I've already signed them. If that's the case, then why did you resign? I was even more confused. A good business person doesn't make a deal that results in losses. I'm confident that even if I leave Lou Corporation, I can build something just as successful from scratch. Starting over will be more of a challenge. She smiled. Besides, I want to use my resignation to trade for something else. Is that okay? Trade for something else? I looked at her, still not understanding. She stood on her toes and brushed the snow out of my hair. Trade it for a chance for us to start over. She looked up, and I lowered my gaze. Our eyes met, and in hers. I saw a tenderness and love that I had never seen before. Traded for a chance for Abigail to win Noah back. Chapter 24. At 11.59, I signed my name on the divorce papers. From that moment on, I was no longer the perfect husband everyone talked about. I was just Noah, myself. The clock tower chimed, ringing in the new year. Abigail and I looked up at the snow falling all around us. It's the new year, I said, reflecting. Yes, it is. Then, her eyes sparkled as she extended her hand toward me. Happy New Year, Noah. I'm Abigail. I looked at her and smiled. Happy New Year, Abigail. I extended my hand too. I'm Noah. 